So you want to get rich. I'm going to tell you a little something about money. In this world, you don't see the richest people doing things with their time and getting paid hourly. There's not enough hours in the day. If you're the highest paid lawyer, the highest paid doctor, no matter how much you make, there's still just not enough hours in the day. There's only one of you, right? We may have different educations, different skills, uh, different opportunities, but the one thing we all have the same is our time. So in this world, if you want to become truly wealthy financially, you need to do things which aren't based on your hours. That means that you need to start a business or own something, because when you're sleeping, the things that you own will still be working, right? So let's say you own a piece of real estate and you rent it out. When you go to sleep, your real estate's still working for you. Let's say you start a business and you have some employees doing the work. Once you can afford your first employee, you can waste your time however you like, assuming that the employee you hired is the right one and can do the job as well as you used to, right? So something that I advise people to do is your first goal should be to buy your own freedom. You should be working so that you don't have to actually show up to work anymore. You can go learn the next thing to take it to the next level because most businesses aren't going to make you a billionaire. Most businesses won't make you a millionaire. In this world, for you to be a billionaire or a millionaire, you've got to fight the, the effects of competition. You've got to fight the effects of taxation. There's a whole ton of things in this world trying to make it so that you can't get that rich. So what are some things that you can use to your advantage? Well, I love to use things that can scale. And scale is just a fancy word for if it works one time, you could do it 10 times as well, right? So let's say you're in a service industry and you've got to go door to door and fix air conditioners. That's really hard to do because if you need to fix twice the number of air conditioners, you need twice the trucks, with twice the tools, and twice the insurance, and twice the advertising, perhaps. And it takes twice as much time and the trucks break down, and the people don't show up on time, and half the employees have drug problems for whatever reason. Maybe it's a Florida thing. And it just doesn't scale well. Now, there's other businesses that scale totally well. Let's say you have a software business, or software as a service. You get one client, great. You get two clients, great. How many clients can you put on a single server? Hundreds, thousands. You don't have to do anything different. It's just zero, the fancy word for it is zero marginal cost, to provide the service to the next person, right? So there's some businesses like moving boxes, where if I sell boxes of things on the internet and make 40% markup, or let's say it's a competitive industry and I make 15 or 20% markup, well, could I sell 10 times as many boxes? Yeah, surely I could, right? Could I sell them into other countries? Could I relabel them? Could I give them certain different features? Could I differentiate my product in a different way? Yeah, sure, I could. But what if I just have a local retail storefront? Once you've like capped out on the number of people you can reach locally, you can't bring people from out of state. They just don't want to make the drive, right? You can't uh, stock as many things on your shelves as for display. You run out of display room, right? Some people you want to you know, sell their stuff and they see you're selling a certain competitive product, they won't let you carry their line because they don't want to you know, compete in that area. Or they've already got so many other retailers in the area that they don't need you. So I love the idea of things which scale and multiply but you might not be able to start there. You might have to buy your freedom first. So what I tell people is, if you're smart enough to know what to buy for yourself, then you're smart enough to help other people buy the same stuff, right? So I happen to like this top hat. Some top hats, when you look on the side, they just go straight. I don't like a top hat that goes straight. I like this curved deal. Some top hats just come up straight on the top. I think it looks boring. I like a top hat that flares at the top a little bit. So I probably know more about top hats than the, the average gentleman. And now that I know what the hell I'm talking about, I know which one holds their shape. I know what type of shape is good. I know which ones aren't going to sweat on your head too much. I'm now qualified to sell them better than most other people because I had to learn these things to get a good product for myself anyway. So now that I've learned these things for myself, it's a somewhat tragedy to just let that information die inside me. Why don't I set up a store set up a little website, costs almost nothing, and say, look, I know what the best top hats you can buy on the internet are. Here they are. I'll drop ship them to you, or I'll ship them to you myself, or you can come see them in my store and take whatever you pay for them. Most things are made in China. You buy them, you stock them. People call, they want it. You bring them to your house, you sell it to them. You don't have to open up a storefront. You can sell it out of your house. 
You don't have to make tons of money. I prefer products that are $200, $300 so that you can make, you know, $100, $120 when someone comes to your house, right? If you do really low ticket items, you know, you got to sell to so many more people. You got to sell to three or four times the people or maybe two times the people if you raise your margins up. So my point is, do something small that you can make a little money on. Anything that you're intelligent about, you can make money on. We live in a world now, like some German guy wanted to kill and eat some other German guy. So we put out an advertisement and said, hey, I'm looking for someone that will let me kill and eat them. And someone responded. And they, he let him kill him, and they ate him together before he died. So that teaches you that whatever crazy, silly thing that you can think of, you can find a counterparty on the internet. Whatever silly thing that you want to sell, if you get that ad on the internet, you can get someone to call, and this likely you'll be able to do some commerce, okay? So if you're smart enough to buy anything for yourself and have any product knowledge at all, then you're smart enough to get a good deal on Alibaba, AliExpress, Banggood, you know, there's a lot of dot-coms out there that'll give you the best deal in the world on a thing. And just put out an ad locally. If the phone rings, great, you get to make a little money. If the phone doesn't ring, great, you have that product that you bought at a low price, you get to use it yourself, right? So in this world, if you're working by the hour, there's no future in it. There's no long-term future in working by the hour. You take a guy like Michael Jordan, multi-multi-millionaire, the vast majority of his revenue does not come from his earnings as a football player. Sorry basketball player. The vast majority of his earnings come from owning his likeness and owning his ability to put his name on things. And you can sell that away, right? Like the Beatles sold away their rights to their music, even though they made it. So just because you made it doesn't mean you own it. You can sell those rights and you can buy them as well. But usually you got to have, you know, a fair amount of money to do that. So in this world, since what you do hourly doesn't scale, you need to own things. You need to own businesses, real estate, intellectual property, patents, or else you don't have any future of becoming a billionaire. I, I can't think of a single human being that has ever become a billionaire in the history of mankind that's done it by the hour. It just doesn't exist. So work hourly, get your business started, save up. You're going to use that money to get your inventory, to get your stock, to buy yourself some more time, right? And then, you know, retail only goes so far. Once you bought your freedom in retail, then you can go into things that scale, things that have network effect, things that are, you know next level, you know, things that venture capitalists would invest in because they can make 10, 100 times their money. If a venture capitalist can't make 10 times his money, he's not really interested in your business because he knows nine times out of 10, what he invests in isn't going to work. So he needs that 10th one to pay at least tenfold to at least break even on the nine that he lost on, right? And these are professionals that do it for a living. So if you're going to, if you're ever going to buy your freedom, you got to start small, right? And Whatever money that you save that you don't waste on things that you don't need is money that can go into your inventory and go into your advertising. And so I suggest you don't fall for stupid scams on the internet with people telling you that you're going to get rich quick and all they do for a living is teach people how to pretend to get rich quick and they just take your money, the money that you could have used to actually start a real business that actually provided real value to real people. If you're paying $3,000, $5,000 to some guru who's going to tell you how to get rich, yet he 